what, I'll go. Just give me a minute. Oh, it's all right. Look, I'm already dressed. Oh, but... You need your rest. I wish he did. OK, mate. OK. Now, let's play at putting some of these back into the box, OK? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, it'll get better, I promise. As soon as you start on the new treatment. Until then, I'll be looking after things, OK? Would it be possible to view the menu for this morning? Certainly, sir. And for today's starter, we have a Mrs Lucy Carlton. What's the matter? Oh, I'm going to need the notes for that one. Lucy Carlton? Oh, she's the one with that nightmare child, isn't she? I don't think it's politically correct to call an autistic child a nightmare these days, Jo. You didn't see the state of the waiting room last time he was in. Andy almost brained Mrs Skinner's daughter with a rolled-up copy of House and Garden. What's he been up to this time? This is nothing to do with Charlie. Charlie, look, not in there. Right, I'm off. Do you want me to pick anything up? Um, no, I think we're fine. Do you have to go in this morning? It's just I've got an appointment at Dr Rawlings. You could come along. Oh, look, I'm sorry, but I've really got to be in court. And soon. Look, why do you want to see him anyway? Didn't Dr Adams explain everything at the hospital? I, I don't know. I mean, he was just so good with Charlie that I thought... Well, Dr Rawlings, who didn't want him to start on the secretary, and look at him now. He's been getting better every day since he's been taken. Lucy. If you want to ask more questions, just give Dr. Adams a call. She's the specialist, not Rawlings. Look, I've got to go. I won't be late. Promise. Morning. Hi, I'm here to see Dr. Mystery. Um, he's running a bit late, actually. Uh, have you got an appointment? Not exactly. I think he's expecting me. It's dumbish. Oh, um, all right. Take a seat. He should be here in a minute. He usually is. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just, um... Oh, right. I, I just have a couple of questions. Well, I sent the letter through to Dr Rawlings. I'm sure he'll be able to explain any queries you might have. No, it's no bother. I'll see you soon. Sorry, girl. Unavoidably detained. Does she have a name? <sighs> Who's my first victim? Queen is back. Oh, it's looking like a long morning already. Is she making any sense? No more than usual. Damish, what are you doing here? Ah, oh, Kate, Joe, damaged that on my nephew. Nice of you to drop by, but shouldn't you be at school? I thought Mum phoned you. About my work experience. Oh, isn't that next week? Don't you have something to ask me, Dr Mystery? Kate, um, could my nephew please do his work experience in your practice? How long is he planning to stay? I thought it was just for today. Just for today. That'll be fine. So why don't you dump your gear in my room and I'll be through in a minute. Yeah. Is he really your nephew? He looks so serious. Afraid so. If you met Anita, then you'd understand why. Who? My sister. She's a force to be reckoned with. And uh, he wants to be a doctor, does he? <laughs> it would seem so. I can't see it myself. Oh, he seemed keen enough. Oh, he's keen, all right. A real bright spark. Anita measures his IQ every month and plots it on a graph on the kitchen wall. It's just that he's never really been, you know, outgoing. Mm. I don't think he's cut out for medical life. Well, he did arrive on time, which puts the introverts one up in my book. Well, maybe some time with his favourite uncle and his nightmare patients might just loosen him up a bit. <laughs> this way, Mrs Yates. See Dr. Rawlings, I've got an appointment. Uh, yeah. All right, take a seat. Thanks.
Your pressure's still a bit high. Have you been taking the tablets I gave you? Yes. Here they are, Doctor. Oh, quite a collection. Uh, which ones have you been taking? It's quite simple, Doctor. The little green ones, they're Mondays and Fridays. And the diamond things, are those purple? Mm -hmm. Well, the purple's for Tuesday and Thursday. And these little white characters, <laughs> look, you can hardly see them. They're for weekends and bank holidays. Bank holidays? Except Christmas. I refuse to take anything over Christmas. That's right, isn't it? Not quite. Charlie, love your break hit. I let him keep it. I've got a draw for the drugs companies just giving away these days. I was very sorry to get your letter from the hospital. It must have come as quite a shock. Not really. I suppose I knew something was wrong, all those tests, but leukemia. I thought that was something kids got. Well, it's certainly unusual. I take it Dr. Adams has been through everything with you. Oh, she tried her best. I'm afraid it was all a bit of a blur, a bit technical. Um, Matthew seemed to take it all in. Where is Matthew today? Oh, he's at, he's at work. He'll be back soon. Ah, so, how can I help you? Looks like the hospital's taking care of everything. No, I suppose I just wanted to hear what you've got to say. Well, why don't you talk me through it? That way we can go over anything that's not clear. OK, <clears throat> here goes. Um, the tests show that I've got leukaemia, um, chronic myeloid leukaemia. And Dr Adams says that I need a bone marrow transplant if I'm going to get rid of it for good. The problem is that transplants don't work for everybody. Um, the leukaemia can come back or the transplant make you ill. Something to do with um, the immune system. Um, if I don't have the transplant, then, well, then the leukaemia will get worse. But they can give you drugs to control it for a while. But nobody knows how long before things start to go wrong. It sounds to me like you've decided on the transplant. Um, I suppose I have. Uh, and Dr Adams wants to put me into a trial. Something about a new treatment. Um, it's from America. Uh, I think it sort of helps the bone marrow to take, something like that. It's all very new. Matthew's got the details, I'm afraid. Well, I've been reading the letter. Seems to me you've got two choices. The bone marrow transplant is a risk. I mean, if it goes well, then, well, then that's great. And uh, it sounds like these new drugs might help. But, like you say, there's a chance things could go wrong. If it doesn't take, then your immune system won't be able to fight the infection. And, well, that's not pleasant. I don't really see what else I can do. Well, if you take the chemotherapy, you could stay well for, I don't know, five, ten years. But the leukaemia will come back. There's no way of avoiding that. <sighs> Some choice. So what would you do? Well, I've, I've seen this situation quite a lot before. I suppose the point is, no one thinks that the transplant isn't going to work for them. Failures always seem to happen to somebody else. If you do gamble on the bone marrow transplant, there is a risk you could lose. But I might not. No, you might not. But there's less of a risk with the chemo. When you said I could stay well for years. Yeah, but the disease will come back. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> it reminds me of that programme. You know, um, do you want to gamble what you've already won to win the star prize? What's it called? Bulls. That's the one. I seem to remember it always used to end with two brummies winning a speedboat. I used to picture them cruising up and down the Grand Union Canal. Yeah, but their money was safe. Charlie, love, stop it. Stop it. How are you getting on with this little one? Don't ask. So I have to take all of these every day? That's it. You take one of these for your heart, one of these for your blood pressure. The purple diamonds. The purple diamonds. And two of these, both for your arthritis. Two tablets? I've only got it in one knee. 
So Charlie's taking secrets in there? Mm, for three months. Though I can't see he's got any better. It's still a handful. I can see that. Where are you getting it from? Mail order. One injection a month. Think they fly it in from America. Keeping your husband happy now, Dan. <laughs> he's livid that he couldn't get it on the NHS. He blames you, I'm afraid. There was really nothing I could do. Secretin's just not licensed for autism in this country, not yet. Well, you know, my husband, once he sets his mind on something, I mean, he's convinced he can see an improvement already. He must be finding this as difficult as you are, the leukemia, I mean. Yeah, in his own way. He's investigating, you know, the internet. Every doctor gets a phone call. I could imagine. Have you decided what you're going to do with Charlie while you're in hospital? Oh, I'd be fine with his dad. But sometimes I think it doesn't matter who he's with. You know, most of the time he's in a world of his own. I think that's why I keep trying to get through to him. Still the only one he'll talk to. Are you getting through to him at all? I think so. You need your mum, don't you, love? Yeah, uh, uh, that's right, Queenie. Just keep taking the tablets, all right? So, what do we think? About what? Is she going to take them? Well, you explained everything very well, and you are a doctor, so I suppose you'll try her best. We asked a hundred people whether they'd consider following the advice of their GP. You said, yes. Our survey said, rah, rah. Not on your life, mate. What do you mean? A lot of people come in here every day with a new problem. Most of the time, there's nothing I can actually do about it. All you can do is listen. And you're good at listening? One of the best. But the real killer is, is that sometimes someone comes in with a problem I can actually fix. High blood pressure, a bit of angina. All they have to do is take the tablets. And you know what they say? What? I don't like taking tablets. They don't agree with me. I forgot. They make me feel sick. But surely that's their choice? Of course it's their choice. But they don't take the tablets and they don't get any better. Most people don't want to cause a scene, so they take their prescription and hide the tablets away in their bathroom cabinet for the next five years. So what are you saying? Just that you've got to be careful before you get into this game. It can be a tiny bit frustrating. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Well, I hope I've been useful in some way. You usually are. It's not an easy decision, so if you need to talk again... Oh, don't worry, I'll be back. Sometimes you just need to talk to somebody to get things straight. Are things any straighter now? Just a bit. See you soon. I hope so. So Rana saw three patients this morning. Oh, well, I suppose Queenie counts as double. What sort of a silly name's Queenie, anyway? But lots of people have odd names. I mean, look at Posh and Bex. What do they call their kid? Brooklyn. But that's different. Posh was in New York when she got pregnant. I've got a mate with a daughter called Salika. Oh, that's a lovely name. Was she conceived in Italy? No, the back of a Toyota. <clears throat> right, I'll make that ten past lunchtime. How does the kebab and calculator grab you? Sure, but I've only got a fiver. Don't worry, your Uncle Ron is in the chair. It'll give us time for a bit more careers advice. Barry, I know the countryside like the back of my hand. It's not going to rain, guaranteed. I've been thinking, what we need is a shelter. Do you think it's okay for me to eat lunch here? Sure, sure. I only come here for the food. What do you want to drink? Coke, please. A uh, glass of Coke and a pint of Stella, please. Should you be drinking on duty? It's only the one. Uh, better make it half, eh? So, how's my gorgeous sister? Still nagging for India? She's fine. What about the Golden Girls? Yeah, uh, Sonia's going to be a lawyer. And Amika, she's got a place on an accountancy course in Bristol. Very conventional. So she just needs a doctor to complete the set, then. Do you want to order some food? That was quick. What? Oh, the case, yeah. They settled out of court in the end. So what have you been doing? I've been on the internet all morning. A haematology site. Apparently, they've been using our new drug in America for a couple of years now. Look at this. 
And there's something here on bone marrow transplant. Matt. Oh, did you speak to Dr. Adams? I thought I could recall tonight, you know, start to get things organised. Matthew, I've been thinking. I've been thinking about Charlie. I'm not sure I can go through with the transplant anymore. But... What if I just have the chemotherapy? Don't take the risk. I thought we decided. No, I think you decided. Well, you know what that means, don't you? L look, I've got, I've got all the information. I know this seems sudden, but I was talking to Dr. Rawlings in the surgery and I came home and started thinking. He persuaded you, did he? Despite everything that Dr. Adams said, he changed your mind. No, no, it wasn't like that. He didn't try and influence me. He just listened. I'm going over there. Oh, no. I'm going to have a chat with Dr. Rawlings. Matthew! The wanderers return. I've got just the patient for you two. If it's bad news, I don't want to hear it. Mrs. Emily Caton Jones requests an audience with a member of the medical profession and jurat. What is it this time? Oh, I'm not privy to that information. What's wrong with her? Try firing up your little computer and looking under H for hypochondria. That's four times this month already. That woman can afford to have the whole of Harley Street uprooted and relocated in her back garden, and yet she insists on making my life a living. Hello, Mrs. Caton Jones. <laughs> and how are you today? This way, please. Having fun? You would not believe what Doogie Howser's just done. Doogie Howser? The nephew from hell. Oh, is he having fun, is he? Oh, he's having a ball. Just introduced Emily Caton Jones to the wonders of the internet. I'm sure she'll find it a very valuable resource. So where have you hidden him now? Pumped him off to Helen. <laughs> Thought those two would get off. Oh, don't get me wrong, I like him. He's a good kid, always have, but... I just don't think he should be doing medicine. It was good enough for you. Yeah, but that was my own decision. A stupid one, but all my own work. See, I know Anita. Once she gets an idea in her head. What, you think he might be pushed into something? Have you seen the kid? You know, he might make a good pathologist, but... Hmm. Interesting reading. Lucy Carlton's note. Who's she? Uh, a patient of mine. Her son's got autism. Um, I had a run-in with the husband about a year ago. Insisted the kid went on secretary. Over my head, I'm afraid. Yeah, it was mine too, till I read about it on the internet. So what's the problem? She's got CML. Oh, nasty. So was that your call? Not really. The letter from the consultant was the first I'd heard about it. They want to transplant it. Yeah, exactly. I've just had a chat with her. Chat? Or are you sticking your nose in? Well, someone's got to talk to her. Oh, I can't cope with this. Do you fancy a beer, Drown our it's, sorrows? It's 3.30. Lemonade? OK, I'll do your deal. Two pints of shandy. Make it a half in your own. What did you say to her? Look, Mr. Carl. What makes you think you've got the right to poke your nose into our business? Uh, please, Matthew, calm down. I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't. She's changed her mind because of you. Lucy says she's not having the transplant. Look, we just talked. We, we talked about Charlie. Oh, it's going to be fine. Everything was decided. Dr. Adams was organising it all, the trial, and, and suddenly she comes to see you, and it's just the same as last time, isn't it? Getting yourself involved in things you don't understand. You'll be getting a letter. I'm... We're making a complaint. Is that everybody? The notes are there. Dr Adams? Mr Carlton, what happened? So, that was Mr. Colton. Yeah, I don't really know what to do. Well, it seems his wife doesn't want to take the medical advice now. That wouldn't have anything to do with you, would it? I told you it was just a chat. Tea and sympathy. 
And you sure you didn't influence her in any way? I don't know. I've got to sort this out before it gets out of hand. I'm going to have to ring Dr. Adam. Is that a good idea? Have you got a better one? Left already. Okay, I'll try on a mobile. Thanks. Hello. Can you excuse me for a second? Which way is Dr. Rawlings' room? Over there. Um, no, I'm sorry, you can't just. Walk Dr. Rawlings? I'm sorry, I'm on the phone. Adams. I'm here to talk about my patient. Matthew Carlton called me. I thought he might have. He told me Lucy decided not to have a bone marrow transplant. So I gather he was here. I suppose you know what that means. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have dealt with this kind of thing before. Then you know that she'll die without this procedure. Yeah, she told me herself. Look, maybe she just needs a little bit more time. Something that's in short supply at the moment. The last thing I need right now is for someone to be poking their nose in my patients. Your patients? Look, nothing I said was designed to change her mind or undermine your position. We simply went over the options. She, she was nowhere near making a decision when she left here. That's not what her husband said. Matthew wasn't there. What I don't understand is why everyone is so obsessed with rushing this choice. Because we need to find a donor. We need to enter her into the trial. We need to oh, get Oh, yeah, a... the trial. Are you sure that's not the major factor here? Are you trying to suggest that I would compromise patient care for the sake of a study? Well, wouldn't you? Lucy certainly didn't seem particularly involved in any aspect of her treatment when she came in here this morning. I had a long discussion with both Lucy and her husband. Oh, and I'm sure her husband... ...asked all the questions. You sure that's not the problem here? The problem here is that you don't know enough about this subject to start counselling my patients. Yes. Uh, is everything all right? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, this is Dr. Adams from the hospital. We were just discussing a case. Oh, hello. Hi. Listen, I, uh, I think we should both go and talk to Lucy right now, don't you? Nice car. You've got to be joking. The Baymobiles in the garage and this was the best they could do. Sit your stuff in the back. So, you still planning on uh, following your uncle's footsteps? Can I tell you something? Sure. You won't tell Mum? Oh, not unless she gets the thumb screws out again. <laughs> I don't actually want to be a doctor. Well, why didn't you say something? I was afraid you'd think I'd been wasting your time. Well, I'll waste my own time, thank you very much. You know what Mum's like. It's usually easier just to play along. So, what are you going to do? Can you keep a secret? Sure. You see, I've got this idea for a company. An internet company. It's a real winner. It just needs a bit of funding. Yeah. I was going to ask you about it. Right, well, why don't you step inside my office and tell me all about it, eh? Dr. Adams came to see me. I, I think we should talk about this before it all gets out of hand. Oh, you mean before I make a complaint against you and your practice? Oh, how many times do I have to tell you? You've got this all wrong. I've been speaking with Dr. Rawlings. Oh, I get it. The first sniff of legal action and you all close ranks. Thought you'd be on my side at least. I'm not on anybody's side. And the trial? I'm not here about the study. And it's not about any complaints either. It's actually about me. Or rather, it's not. It's about Charlie. Charlie's the reason why I'm not having the transplant. It's nothing to do with Steve, and it's certainly nothing to do with any new drugs. But He's seven years old. You know what it's like. Every day, constant attention. He needs his mum. I can't risk leaving him. I just can't. 
What about me? I need you too. You do understand what you're saying. All I need to understand is that I've got a seven-year-old son, a seven-year-old autistic son. If I can give him just a, a few years where he could try and cope on his own, it might make all the difference. But with a transplant? I might not be here. I can't risk it. Not now. Oh, Uncle Rana looks pleased with himself. Uncle Rana's just about to become a very rich man thanks to his charming and talented young nephew. What do you mean? I could tell you, but then I'd only have to kill you. Suit yourself. Oh, Mrs. Kate and Jones is looking for you, so I gave her your email address. I suppose I owe you an apology. You and me both. Hey, uh, I didn't mean to imply about the trial. Oh, it doesn't matter. Not really a good day, all things considered. <laughs> when you start out, do you think you're going to have the answer to everything? Or at least that you're going to be able to discover them? If you work hard enough. If you work hard enough. I suppose we've all got a bit more work to do. 